George M. Irwin was born on May 2, 1921 in Quincy and led a life dedicated to creativity and the preservation of a hometown he loved. And he scaled that enthusiasm to make lasting impacts at the state and national level as well. George attended Quincy Public Schools and graduated from the University of Michigan in 1943. He became a leader in two businesses founded by his grandfather, Leighton Irwin, the Irwin Paper Group, founded in 1887, and the Quincy Compressor Company, which is still in operation today. Leighton Irwin was inducted into the Chamber's Business Hall of Fame in 2010. George's greatest impacts and legacy, though, are most notable in the creative community. George was consumed with love for the arts. He was motivated by beauty, beauty of construction, buildings, architecture, beauty of music, beauty of painting, beauty, beauty of sculpture, anything that was creative at all, he loved. This love for the arts led George to found countless organizations that would prove integral to the identity of a town that has become known for its arts and culture sector. The organizations locally that he founded include the Quincy Society of Fine Arts, which is America's first arts council, the Quincy Symphony Orchestra, for which he was also the first conductor, Quincy Civic Band, Chamber Music Ensemble, and the Civic Music Association. He chaired the reorganization of the Quincy Community Little Theater after World War II and sat on boards of the Quincy Art Center, the First Union Congregational Church, Culver Stockton College, and Blessing Hospital. He was also well known for his work in preservation, locally securing historic places like the Dr. Eels Underground Railroad Home and the Quincy History Museum on the Square. I don't think he would have been able to accomplish what he did without his significant executive skills. He could organize a, a symphony orchestra in, inside a barrel. I mean, he was just on it. He knew how to do it. So it was that extraordinary appreciation of the arts, the good eye, the good ear, and then those executive skills that made him um, just an amazing human being. Irwin's impact in the arts could be seen far beyond Quincy at the state, national, and even international levels. He was also highly decorated with awards including the Governor's Arts Award, Distinguished Service Award from Southern Illinois University, the Preservation Honor Award from the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and many more. The State of Illinois and City of Quincy have both held honorary George M. Irwin days. He was recognized by at least four U.S. presidents and received Lifetime Achievement Awards from the Illinois Arts Alliance, Landmark Preservations Council, and Illinois Humanities Council, among others. He didn't just organize, start, you know, 45 arts organizations or whatever. He founded and was the first uh, chairman of the Illinois Arts Council. He founded the Business Committee for the Arts. He worked with the Endowment for the National Endowment for the Arts. He worked with UNESCO and the Peace Corps in terms of using art around the world. So he was not just a local boy in Quincy. He was a national and an international figure. A comprehensive list of the organizations Mr. Irwin founded or contributed to, as well as a chronological listing of more than 40 of his awards and honors can be found at artsquincy.org. Today, Irwin's legacy within the business community continues to grow in an arts and culture sector that is the sixth largest employer in Quincy and generates more than $16 million in economic activity each year. The organizations he founded contribute to the quality of life in Quincy, the recruitment and retention of our workforce, and provide families and students creative outlets in visual arts, music, theater, history, humanities, and more. Throughout his 99 years with us, George M. Irwin's drive and imagination were absolutely limitless. It is a great honor for him to be included in the Quincy Area Chamber of Commerce's Business Hall of Fame to recognize that arts and culture aren't incidental to business, Rather, they are critical pieces of the fabric of our community that we must continue to invest in for the next generations of Quincyans to make our community a better place to live, work, and create.